Michelle, I transform this picture into these three masterpieces. So I'll be creating three different variants and you have to select your bits down in the comment section. Tell me the one you love most. So all this will be done free of charge and all the backgrounds will be given to you guys to download for free. All you just need to do is to check the link in my bio and go straight down to my telegram group and download it there. So with no further ado, let's jump into action. So this picture was taken with Canon USR, a 15mm prime lens, ISO 200, shutter speed 4.5 and uh, shutter speed 1 slash 160 and aperture 4.5 so the first time I need to do is to do my basic settings in the camera row you know want to know how to do that watch my other videos I'm going to show you how I do that there so I'm going to do the basic setting just to balance my lighting here and I will bring my picture straight into Photoshop so let's say for the essence of tutorial let's say I'm done with these settings right now all I just need to do is to open my picture what? open my picture in Photoshop open and I wait for it to load up so the next thing I will need to do right now is for me to crop my picture into the size I want. So I'll be using my 4x5 into bracket 8x10 because the reason why I use 4x5, as I usually say in my video tutorial, is because I do post mostly on Instagram and I don't like it on Instagram resize my photo for me. I like giving it a default size I want myself so that everything I did in post-production is going to show. It's not that I'm going to be cutting some aspect of it off. So that means it right now for me to crop out right now I'm going to click on my crop tool which is over here you can press C on your keyboard and it's going to take you there directly then I'm going to expand my picture like this you notice the moment I'm actually expanding my picture right now it's still on a fixed range of 4 by 5 into bracket 8 by 10 as mean I just clear this right now I clear this right now I'm just expanding it as you can see it's going to deform the shape for me but if I'm to select the ratio 4 by 5 into bracket 8 by 10 whatever I do is going to be on a fixed radius as you can see right now so this is how wide I want the background to be so I'm going to adjust my subject from the middle and I'm going to rotate it a little bit so it's going to be standing very very thin then I'll click on my OK on my keyboard as easy as that the next thing I need to do is to retouch my picture but I'm going straight into Roto AI to do the retouching because it saved me a lot of time so do the retouching right now all I just need to do right now is to head over to a Roto and work on my picture in less than one minute if you want to know how I download the software I want to make use of them there's a video I dropped there are some videos I dropped my tutorial that will teach you how to use them and also click the link down in my bio to sign up and get 15 credits to try some pictures out you'll be able to edit and export 15 pictures before you make purchase of it so that being said right now welcome back so now we've done we've what we've actually retouched our picture so that's what retouch our picture look at how glossy our skin is and it saves me a lot of time doing so as many I have about 50 pictures also I can edit everything all at once using that also so the next thing we'll be doing right now is for we to do what expand our background. But firstly, let's select our subject out of the background. To do that right now, the two layer right now, let's forget about this two layer right now. This is just a sample layer of what we want to achieve. So let me delete this right now. What I just need to do right now is to duplicate my background layer by clicking on Ctrl J. If you're using a MacBook, it's going to be a Command J there. So the next thing I will do right now is to pick my quick selection tool or whatever tool you know how to use to select your subject, then I'm click on select subject. I wait for it to load up. You can use whatever tool you know how to use best. You don't have to use the one I'm using right now. So I'm going to add to this selection, pick my polygonal axle too. But please, if you want to know how to do manipulation, please learn how to remove background perfectly first. You need to know how to do that. If not, you're going to have issue when it comes to background manipulation. As you can see right now. And if you want to know how to do that, watch my other videos on how I detail on background removal process. So See you guys at the end of the cropping. So let's say we're done with the cropping right now. You can actually take your time and do it more perfect than the way I did it, but just not to bore you guys out. Next thing I need to do right now is just to right click on it. I'll go to feather. On that feather, I'll be using 2.0 pixel and click on OK. Next thing I'll do is just to create a max on it. We're done with that right now. Then I'll go back to my background layer again and duplicate it once more. This time around, let's name the first one. Let's name this our subject layer. So that you won't guys you guys won't be confused let's name it subject and let's name this right now expand expand as you can see right now so under the expand right now we are going to hold down our control key or command key if i using a macbook then click on the subject click on the max of the subject this is the max over here so it's going to bring back the selection we created later on for us next thing you need to do is just to go to what go to select another select you go to modify then you click on expand I'll be expanding my 8 pixel and I'll click on OK. So what the expand does is that it actually created a space between our subject and the background, created a little space. 
Next thing I'll do right now is to click on my rectangle marker tool. I'm going to scroll from the top. I'll scroll from the left. The reason why I was able to select more than one time is because I'm using addition. Take note of that. I'm going to select from the left hand side also again, and I'm going to select from the bottom also. As you can see right now. So I'm just going to do all the selections and I'm going to right click on it. I'll go to fill. I'll right click on it. I'll go to fill. Under fill, I'll make sure I click on my content away and I'll click on OK. So what it's going to do is going to fill all this area up with the initial background color and it's going to make it look very, very seamless. And boom, look at what it did for us. It filled us all those area up for us with the initial background color. But I had an issue right here because I did not select to this footer area. So it wasn't able to do this area for me. Ctrl D to select on that. Then pick your part two. Circle over that area and drag it to a cleaner area. And it's going to fill that area up also. Zoom out. Ctrl D to do the, the selection. So let's move this background up right now. For what to do that, duplicate your expand layer. So name this layer now. Let me blur layer. B-L-U-R. Click on OK. So on that layer right now, go to filter. On that filter, go to blur. Then click on Gaussian blur. So I'll be using Sunray as my radius. I'll click on my OK. And boom, look at how seamless our backdrop look right now. Very, very nice and straightforward. So the next thing we need to do, let's bring back our shadow. Though there's no more shadow here, but I still love to be bring, even though it's just a tiny bit of shadow back to my picture. I'm going to create a max on my blur, and I'll pick my normal, I'll pick my normal brush. Then I'm going to scroll over the area I want the shadow to come back to. Mind you, if your layer max is on white, make sure your brush color is on black to bring something out. So I'm going to scroll over that area. So it brought back a little bit of shadow for me, which is actually okay. That being said right now, you can color grade your picture like this and export it this way, you are good to go. But for me, I would love to do what? I would love to bring in some backgrounds, which I want you guys to pay attention to. If you watched the video to this point in time, that means you're loving my tutorial. So the only thing you can do to support me right now is just to click on the subscribe button and also drop a like. And you also have a question, you can also drop a comment. You subscribing, you liking my video is going to make YouTube recommend my videos to others and that's going to encourage me to create more videos like this for you guys to learn from. And note, I will also be dropping so many files that you guys can download for free, files you need to be getting for premium, each like count, each subscription counts. So the first one, I'll just have to go to what? I'll go to file, under file, I'll go to place embed, place embed. And I'm going to do what? Go to my file manager and I'm going to look for the background I want to make it up. So here's the first background I'll be using right now. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to click on place. Wait for it to load up. I'm going to expand it till I save it. As you can see, I'll click on OK. But the issue there right now is I only need this cutting from the background. I don't need the other part of the background. There are, there are two ways for you to do this. You can just crop out this or you can just do what? Create a max on it. Pick your normal brush. Make sure the color is on black. Then you do what? You scroll over the right where you don't want again. I'm going to scroll over it like this. Scroll white like this. As you can see, it's bringing back our initial background color for us. And I'm going to scroll over the top area too like this. As you can see. Can you see what we just did right now? Very, very simple and straightforward. So our background is now looking very, very pink right now. All I just need to do is to make sure I balance the color with this initial color right now. To do that, I'll click on it, Control U. I'm going to mess with my hue until I see the colors I want. I think the color is around this way, and I'm going to do what bring down the opacity a little bit. I'm going to click on OK. As you can see right now, Ctrl Z, sorry, Ctrl U on it, adjust the color, and I'm going to bring down the color a little bit. Then I'm going to click on OK. So the next thing I'll do right now is for me to do what I want to add something to the footer area also again, which is like I call it a cloud, a cloud effect. So I have another background that has that features. I'll go back to my file, under file, I'll click on place embed. Instead of me to drag and drop into Photoshop, I can do place embed also again, because I know some of you might be confused that why am I doing place, place embed instead of drag and drop. So I'll do what, I'll do what, drag it down to Photoshop. I'm going to do what, click on it and I'm going to place it in Photoshop. As you can see right now. So I'm going to do what, expand this till I see fit. It's going to fit where I want it to be. As you can see right now. So here is where I want it to be. I'll click on my OK. Then I'm going to drag it above my subject layer. I'll create a max on it. Then I'm going to pick my brush, make sure the color is on black. And I'm going to scroll over the area where I don't want it to be in the picture. I'm going to scroll over that area. So you can see. I'm going to reduce the brush size when I'm getting to a more detailed area. As you can see right now. Click on my pick tool. 
and I'm going to bring it down a little to make it fit where I want it to be. Very, very simple and straightforward. But the background is a little bit too bluish on my liking. So I'm going to reduce uh, the blue in the background. I'm going to click on where the background ends. Where is, that's my blur area over here. I'll go to my hue and saturation. Hue and saturation. I'm going to desaturate the background and I'm going to increase the brightness of the background. As you can see right now. So it's going to blend in perfectly. And I can do the same thing for this cutting also again. I will control U on it. I'll desaturate it 100%. You can see. And I'm going to increase the brightness or I will decrease the brightness a little bit just to blend with my background. Very, very simple and straightforward. Look how we created this hyper realistic background right now. And I'll be giving the background for free for you guys to make use of whenever I want to use them. So I will delete the two background right now and I'm going to bring in another background again so that we can try out. So next thing I need to do right now, I'll still go back to my file manager again. File, go to place embed. Look for place embed. Where's my place embed? Click on it. Then I'll scroll and look for another background I want to make use of again. Scroll and look for it. Okay, here's the background over here. I'm still going to place it right now. As you can see, I'm going to expand it till I see fit. I'll expand it till I see fit. I want it around this way. I'm going to click on my OK. Then I'll do what? I'll create a max on it because I want to clean up this footer area so that my shadow is going to return back. I'll click on my brush, my normal brush color. As I said earlier on, if the max is on white, the brush color has to be on black. So I'm going to scroll white like this so that I'm going to return back the footer area. Once I'm done, all I just need to do is just to reduce the opacity of it because I don't like how bright it is. I'll click on my OK. Then the next thing, I'll still go back to my file again, another file. I'll still go back to what? Place embed. And I'll bring in the last overlay, which I'll be making use of right now. So I'm going to scroll and look for the overlay right now. So here's the background I'll be using right now. What I just need to do is just to place it again. As you can see. And I'm going to expand it to where I want it to be. Can you see? You can even use this background like this and export your picture and it's going to look very, very nice. So the background will also be given to you guys for free. Then the next thing I'll do right now, I'll drag it down below the one I just put there right now to give me that effect. I'll create a max on it. I'll pick my brush, make sure it's on black, and I'm going to scroll over the footer area back again. As you can see right now. Very, very simple and straightforward. So if this video helped, don't forget to drop a like. Someone out there might be in need of this video. See you guys in my next video tutorial. Reflex out.